What's up guys? Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. This is season 13, episode 10. So let's get into it. All right, y'all. So the episode opens up where it left off, where we're still at Crystal's Taco Tuesday party and Erica and Denise are getting into it. Dorit done left after everybody was whacking that lady every, <laughs> every which way. And Erica has just made the statement. I just want to know who makes more on their OnlyFans. You or Sammy. And the room is awkwardly silent and stunned. You got Garcelle being like, my God. You got <laughs> Sutton's eyes just big as saucers. Kyle's eyes are also big as, big as saucers, but her mouth is open. And, and Kim is just drinking her drink, eyes darting back and left. <laughs> and I am tickled. <laughs> because, girl... So you got Denise being like, you're evil. You're just a mean person. And Erica was like, yeah, because you sent for me. Like, did you not think I was going to come back at you when I find out that you're calling me to see you next Tuesday? You're being mad disrespectful towards me. You're calling me a, everything but a child of God. Why would I be nice to you? And I'm looking at Denise like, yeah, girl, why would she be nice to you? Like, like if you already have this um, notion that you feel like Erica's just this mean, evil person, why would you not be ready for whatever she brought at you? Like, if I knew my child was doing OnlyFans, I would be prepared for somebody to come at me about my child doing OnlyFans and me also doing OnlyFans fans like the rebuttals that I would have in my head would be prepared and maybe that's just because you know it's Capricorn season shout out to all my Capricorns <laughs> maybe it's just because I that's just how my mind works like I'm just someone who's like okay you you got to prepare for whatever people say about you but I'm just like if I'm definitely going into a verbal confrontation with somebody my my reads and things are gonna be ready in my head you know what I mean so She's just like, you're so evil. And Erica's like, well, girl, you sent for me. So what was I supposed to do? What, well, like, what, what was I supposed to do? And Erica's just like, ma'am, you brought it up. So then Erica's like, why are you mad at me when you were also at that party that happened in 2019, speaking about how big your husband's private parts were? And Denise was like, what? Kind of like, and I, it was like Denise wasn't prepared for that part of the conversation either. And she's like, um, what she say? Oh. She's like, I really like that. That doesn't have anything to really do with our conversation. And then Sutton in her confessional was like, yeah, I was at that party. She did bring it up. And I wanted Sutton to speak up. But then again, I'm like, Erica didn't need any help <laughs> getting at Denise. because She was doing fine wrapping that lady up all on her own. So she was just kind of like. She was like, you were talking about him. And then Erica's like, also, when you brought up to me about our conversation and how you didn't like it or felt like it was inappropriate, I apologize. And they showed the flashback of Erica apologizing. So it kind of is like, Denise, girl, why'd you bring this up? And then Garcelle asked Denise, like, what do you want from her? Like what, what, like, what are you trying to get out of this conversation? And Denise is like, I just want her to explain to me why she was so mean towards me. And Erica's just looking at her. Everyone else is looking at her like, what, like, ma'am, what? And so then Denise starts to bring up Erica's um, legal situation. She was like, you're all, like, that's all you do. She's just deflecting. And Erica's like, I'm not deflecting. I My life has been on display for the past few years. What are you talking about? And then Denise says, I'm just like how that money randomly showed up in your account. And then Erica's like, it did randomly show up in my account. And the courts proved that that's what happened. And I was just like, well, okay. Okay. And so then they just kind of sitting there, just drinking tea, looking at each other crazy. And Erica's just like, you know what, Denise? This is a tired conversation. I, like, girl. So then Kim gets up and she leaves because she's just like, I got my feel of drama for the day. Let me go get in the car to call my friends. <laughs> Probably going to call Brandy to let Brandy know what, what went down. And so then they're still sitting there. And then... 
that's when Erica says the whole, like, you know what, Denise, this conversation is, like, four years old. Like, you were the one that brought it up, not me. And did you not think I was going to come at your neck? And so that's when Erica's, like, in her confessional, like, don't come for me. Like, do not come for me. And everyone's just kind of sitting there, eyes just, like, girl. And Denise just looks stupid. She looks stupid. So... Then Kyle says something about how, oh, kids are off limits. Like, she shouldn't have brought up your kids. So then Garcelle was like, well, Kyle, why didn't you say that while they were arguing? And Kyle was like, because she needed to handle this, like, on her own. And then Kyle was like, why are you asking me to stand up for her when none of y'all stood up for me a week ago where y'all were questioning and trying to figure out if my husband cheated on me or not? And then Garcelle's whole thing is like, well, girl, I didn't say anything about Sudden is because I had questions like you got a new ring you're changing like your whole entire lifestyle like it's giving that something definitely has happened between you and your husband and we just I, I was curious and so Kyle was just like yeah girl I Kyle ends up saying like if we're gonna play every man for themselves then every man is legit legitimately for themselves and so Erica, you know, is walking around the kitchen. We see Nia again and Erica is like, everyone ends up leaving. Crystal's in her confessional talking about how Erica hasn't changed and how, and I'm like, Crystal, shut up. Because if you really felt that way, why didn't you speak up? Because you sat there glad, like, like happily as all that stuff was happening. And then when Erica was leaving, Erica's like, my bad for messing up your party. And she's like, you didn't ruin anything. And I'm like, Crystal, you should have told her how you felt, but you didn't. Like, you're lame. You didn't. So here's the thing about Denise and Erica. I honestly think that Denise has misplaced anger as well as she allowed the fans to gas her up. Now, let's talk about the misplaced anger. I think Denise's real issue is with Lisa Renna, but I also think Denise backed herself into a corner and... And when I say that is she kind of pigeon held. Is it pigeon held or pigeon held? Either way, she did this to herself. Denise was going on and on about how she would never come back on the show if Lisa Renna was on the show. Denise did does not know how to play the reality TV game because had I been Denise, I would have stayed on the show. But Denise and her fine weirdo husband left the show like cowards. Like you you knew what reality TV you were signing up for. You knew what you were going into it with. And you allowed somebody who you thought was your friend. Granted, that probably hurt like hell to have a 20-year friendship to see somebody throw it away. But that's when Denise should have got in her bag and started to drag Lisa Rinna for filth. Because you can't tell me that Denise didn't know the skeletons, that, that Denise doesn't know the skeletons in Lisa Rinna's closet. That she doesn't have dirt on Lisa Renner or Harry Hamlin. Because that's where you, that's how you hurt Lisa. Start talking about that husband. Kim, Kim said it. Let's talk about the husbands. And Lisa <laughs> tried to shank the lady, okay? The, you know, broke the glass on the table and was angry as hell. So I'm like, Denise didn't play the game. So now she's back on the show trying to play the game with Erica. But it's like, you already lost. Because one, you ran away with your tail between your legs. Two, the issue that you have with Erica is not that big of a deal, especially when she apologized to you, bro. Like, that's the part that I don't think Denise is understanding is Erica apologized with the conversation. And you also, you played a hand in that conversation by talking about your husband's you know what. And she's, and, and it's also like Denise is putting 20 on 10 because I remember when I was between the ages, like when I was 13 and 14, where I would hear conversations that my parents would have with their friends or have at dinner parties. And when everybody would leave, I would just ask them like, what was y'all talking about? And either they would tell me what they were talking about and explain it to me, or they wouldn't. And they'd be like, don't worry about it. But kids do that as well as you can't, if I knew what threesomes were during, during the age of 13 and 14, I'm pretty sure your kids know what threesomes are as well. They might not understand fully, but they know it's sex between three people. Like, Denise is trying to act like her kids are saints when their daddy is Charlie Sheen, the man that was out here drinking tiger's blood. Girl, that man is crazy. And you also are known for doing, like, a sex scene and being on a crazy, is it Days of Our Lives? 
one or, or, or one day to remember either way you're on a soap opera show that is scandalous and salacious so i feel like denise really didn't have a real gripe with erica she's just angry because the person that she wanted to go at is no longer there when she she could have if denise would have just stood in her uncomfortableness of being around elisa runner and just started firing back at her she probably wouldn't be here right now. Then also the fans, the fans gassed up Denise. And everyone's like, yeah, once Denise gets, Denise wasn't going to give us nothing because she gave us nothing when she was on the show. So I don't know why y'all thought she was going to come back and read the girls down when, like I said, she was well within her right to spray the block on Lisa Renna for the way Lisa did her. And she did nothing to now come back and, and the first time we see her for real, for real, <laughs> the lady is on cloud 2800 or either drinking something to now be in a situation like a group scene with Erica and get verbally decimated. Girl, <laughs> girl. So I'm going to do the Garcelle and uh, Dorit scenes all together. So let's hop over to Crystal and let's talk about Sutton. So we see Sutton and her matchmaker. Sutton, I think, went on two dates. But if I'm going to be all the way 100 with y'all, I fast forward through them. <laughs> I don't care about Sutton living her bachelorette lifestyle. Hopefully, she finds the right person that she wants to be with and spend time with for the time being. Um, I mean, she don't got to worry about money. So cause she, she, she could just have a little boot thing and keep it pushing. But it looks like Sutton really wants to have companionship. Something that I saw on Twitter that gave me the craziest laugh or the great, the craziest like giggle was someone said, how does Sutton's matchmaker have more screen time than Crystal? And the way I cackled, I said, ooh, they not lying. So let's talk about Crystal. So we get this scene with Crystal where she's with her kids and her husband. They're having dinner. They're talking about how they've been married since 2007. Mind you, that's still weird to me. Crystal was 24 when they got married and Rob was 45. Ain't no way I'm marrying somebody 20 years older than me. I just, I can't do it. Like my rule has always been, um, I will go down three years younger than me and at most five years older than me. After that, it's a no-go. At least we're still like, I feel like if you're five years older than me, we're still somewhat, or or five or three years younger than me, we're still in the same like generation. Once we get to like two generations, like you a boomer and you trying to holler at me, that is disgusting. That is nasty, okay? Like my mama said, old men give you worms. Stop it, okay? Gonna be walking around here with diseases. Mm -mm. So... She's sitting down at the table and she starts talking to Rob about the ladies and about Taco Tuesday. And she was saying how she doesn't like how the ladies want her to speak up more. And then we get the clip that they used in the um, trailer, which pissed me off. And I'm going to play for y'all. Of her, she was like, this group always wants me to yell and all this stuff. And I'm like, why wouldn't y'all just show that scene? But in that scene, I guess Garcelle was telling Crystal to speak up more because she has so much to say when they had to sit down with Denise, as well as we see Crystal being in her confessionals like a confessional gangster, not saying anything. And so Crystal's excuse for not saying anything is saying that, She's more focused with the way the ladies look. Now, we know that Crystal let us know her first season, I think, that she had an eating disorder or she has been battling an eating disorder. And we're no stranger to that if you're a Real Housewives fan. A lot of um, all of the franchises, if not, I don't know. I guess Potomac and Atlanta haven't spoken about eating disorders, but we've seen it on New Jersey. They talked about it on New York. Um, we talked about it on Beverly Hills. And I don't, I don't think, have they talked about it on OC? I don't think so. But we know that women and men as well suffer from eating disorders. And I've also seen people who've had eating disorders talk about how having an eating disorder really alters your brain and how you view yourself, even when you're beyond, um, when you're past that, I guess I would say, like when you've gotten a handle on 
creating healthier habits and crystal was saying how you know now she's really just focused on how the girls look and they do the flashback when they was with miss eagle woman and you know everyone was talking about how erica is the disappearing woman with her losing weight and crystal was like Ugh, i wish i was that skinny so i'm not faulting her for if that is really happening to her but it also doesn't help with crystal because she's not she's not she's not doing it for people for me or for the people anymore it's kind of like you're not in, if you're not going to engage in group scenes or be in confrontation with any other ladies your personal life has to be more like it has to be interesting like and yours isn't like you and your beef with your brother is not interesting like it's not like the richard sisters where are the like where we've seen it since season one to now and even that's not that interesting, but we have more of an investment in that. This, like I keep saying, we don't know Crystal's brother. Crystal's brother is not a character on the show. So her constantly talking about um, her issue with her brother and how her brother, I guess, blames her, which I say... Your brother was being weak, and we're going to call a spade a spade. He allowed his mom and you to deter him from being with his wife. And mind you, I don't fault that lady because I wouldn't be with you. We in a whole pandemic. Bodies is dropping. And you decide to leave me to go be with your family, and I can't come with you. You are not the man I need to be with. <laughs> like, And so I don't fault that lady for saying, you know what? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. But she says how, I guess, when their dad got sick, because we find out that Jeff is her older brother, so she's the youngest, that she took on more of a maternal role, and the roles have reversed since their dad has gotten sick. And she was like, it's coming from a good place, but I need to back off. And I was like, you do. But I am interested to see what kind of, what ignites the beef between Anne Marie and Crystal. Because... I think that's the only reason why Crystal is still here is because of Anne Marie. <laughs> if we're going to be all the way 100, because we're on episode, I think, 10. And what has Crystal really done? Everybody else is working except Crystal. So let's talk about these Richard sisters. So we see Kim go over to Kyle's house and she has on this hummingbird necklace. It was actually a really nice necklace and she gives it to Kim. And Kim was talking about how, uh, no, Kyle was talking about how hummingbirds really speak to her, mainly because she uses them as a sign from her mom. She was like, after that iconic fight in that limo with Adrian and Ken trying to break up Kim and Kyle, after Kim let it be known that Mauricio and Kyle stole her house and then Kyle lets it be known that Kim is on drugs and an alcoholic, mess it was such a messy good scene uh the golden era of reality tv um she was like she saw a hummingbird at her house like it was just sitting in her house and she was just crying because she was like mom what do i do so while they're in the kitchen they start talking about kim's daughter that's getting married i think her name is whitney and how she's excited how she actually loves the guy that she is about to marry and then she also asks her sister are you bringing a plus one and then she ends up saying that like because she doesn't want anybody there that's not in a good place with everyone that's there now a lot of people thought she was talking about Kathy I think she was talking about Mauricio which lets it be known that they really do have issues in their relationship because why is my sister asking me is she bringing a plus one when I know she married like if I if my sister's married I'm automatically assuming that she's bringing her husband so there's definitely stuff going on between Kyle and Mauricio so they start talking it gets very emotional you could tell that Kim just wants Kyle and Kathy to be on the good foot again and, and be good but I don't think they've ever been good and then they start talking about their mom they start talking about how Kathy is so mean they do flashbacks of how um that whole situation in Aspen and I told y'all I always believed that Lisa Renna was telling the truth it's just that Lisa Renna it's Lisa Renna you know <laughs> and at this point Lisa Renna's like credibility and who she was as a person just derailed everything for her so I've always believed that Kathy did say those disparaging things about the ladies I it just it was like the messenger wasn't somebody you wanted to hear it from 
Um, and when Kyle, they flash back to the reunion when Kyle was explaining how, like, Kathy didn't even explain to her what happened with the DJ. She just told Kyle, let's go. And it scared Kyle. And then so you see Kyle crying in the kitchen with Kim. Kim starts getting emotional because Kim was like, yeah, that, that gives me anxiety too. So then they start talking about the mom. And girl, big Kathy did a number on her children. She did a number on her children, baby. And the thing about it is, is like, although I see where Kyle is coming from, I don't think she's innocent in the demise of her relationship with her sisters either. I think all three of them have played in hand in the destruction of their relationship, but the sole root of their relationship is their mom. Big Kathy screwed them girls over. And I don't know if it was in a young clip or somebody had like stitched an old young clip and was explaining how kids who grow up in toxic households or with one parent that's toxic, as they get older, they start to take on different traits. So you have Kim crying about how angry she was and she might've taken on big Kathy's anger. You got Kyle talking about how Kathy speaks so badly to them and how like she's dismissive. That's probably from, Kathy probably learned that from their mama. And then you got Kyle who I don't think has the best communication skills and always labels herself as a victim. Probably got that from her mama too. So none of them have taken on positive traits from their mother. Okay. That lady set them kids up for failure or these women up for failure. But I do think that if they genuinely want to work on their relationship, they're going to have to go to like group therapy together, together. And I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay. Cause it don't look like Kathy want to change because I've seen clips of her on Paris's show and she would get on my nerves too. If she was my mama. And it's just, I don't know. I know, I, I think it's good for Kyle to want to set boundaries with her sister, but she also has to understand with setting boundaries means that you're going to miss out on a lot of things. And I'm not saying that like, that as like, ooh, like girl, you're going to miss out. It's more so like you have to accept the fact that you cutting off your sister means that you probably won't have access to like her kids or your your um your nieces and then their children. You probably won't be invited to family events. Your kids won't have a relationship with them. You have to be able to sit with that and say like, okay, once I make this decision, I'm moving forward. And for a lot of people, that's a hard decision to make, but the constant back and forth with them would get on my nerves if I was a part of their family. Cause I would be like, either y'all gonna be cool with each other like, Kat, like Kim said, Either y'all gonna change how y'all moving or y'all just not gonna, y'all just not gonna be. And we see that they already are cool cause they out here taking pictures together. Like Kyle was posted up with her sister a month before this scene was filmed, taking pictures with her at, I think she said Elton John's Oscar party. If you really wasn't rocking with your sister, why are you taking pictures with her? Cause if I'm not rocking with my family member, I'm not taking, taking pictures with them, but that's just me. Okay, y'all, so this situation between Dorit and Garcelle, and my thoughts might be all over the place, so bear with me, and I apologize in the, in advance if you not there with me, <laughs> or you don't want to bear with me, but my thoughts are all over the place because I'm conflicted, or really not more so conflicted, it's like I see both sides, I see where Garcelle is coming from as a black woman, but I also understand where Dorit is coming from as someone who doesn't seem to be malicious that she just stumbling over her words at times so here's the thing we get this scene of Garcelle um she's on the phone on FaceTime with Sutton it's like maybe a day or two after the party and she's telling Sutton that she cried herself to sleep that night that she is really still hurt by what Dorit said to her Sutton is like yeah I'm glad that you attacked her privilege and I think where Garcelle is losing people because people are don't like what Garcelle is doing is She's overly victimizing herself. Like, was the word, like, was Dorit using the word attack messed up? Yeah, because I would have looked at her and been like, I didn't raise my voice at you. You just got cussed out by Sutton and you didn't say she was attacking you. Why are you saying I'm attacking you? Because I'm not. You sound stupid right now. You're just mad because everyone's whacking you from both sides and you can't handle it. So I, so the part of her like saying I cried, I'm like, why are you crying over what Dorit got to say? And granted, different things trigger people, but I'm like, that coming from Dorit, of all people, Miss Scammer, Miss Scam Artist, Dorit, I don't, I, 
that's where Garcelle is losing me, right? It when when I was in this scene, I was like, I. Mm, and then, girl, you friends with Sutton. Y'all know I like Sutton, but you're not going to tell me Sutton ain't a Karen when she is part of the 1% and grew up in Savannah, Georgia. Girl, I'm an East Coast Southern girl myself. <laughs> like, I grew up, like, one of the places my family was stationed was in Atlanta, Georgia. You're not going to tell me Sutton don't have Karenisms. So it's like you're calling someone a Karen, but it's like you're friends with someone who you know has Karen tendencies, girl. But I also feel as though Garcelle probably gives Sutton more grace and is more willing to educate Sutton because they are friends and because she sees value in Sutton. Garcelle don't see value in Doree, <laughs> and that's her that's her prerogative. So we then have a scene while that scene is going on where Erica is going to Doree's house. And while Erica is at Doree's house, she talks to her about the whole situation between her and Garcelle. And Erica makes the point to say that she does not believe that Dorit is a malicious person, but she does have a tendency to like put her foot in her mouth. And this might be like an unconscious thing. And she just needs to, you know, apologize and move forward once she has a sit down with Garcelle. So we get to the sit down. It's awkward as hell. It is so awkward. You can tell that neither one of them want to be there or they don't really want to have this conversation. So Dorit allows Garcelle to have the floor. And Garcelle pretty much says like there's three things you can't say to a black woman you can't call her aggressive you can't say she's attacking you and you can't say she's angry labeling her as that is dangerous and then Dorit's response is like first of all I didn't know me saying that I attacked you was gonna cause any issue when we've used attacked in this group all the time and they show proof you got Erica saying she felt attacked you got um Denise saying she feels attacked and you also have What's her name? Sutton saying she felt attacked. And uh, Garcelle's response to that, she was like, but was that ever directed towards me? It was never, like, like that has nothing to do with me. But I can get where Dorita's coming from, where she's like, we use attacked all the time in this group. Like, why do we need to switch it up for you? And then that's when the whole conversation of you being in a bubble, because it's like, you do kind of have to switch up the way you speak to people from different demographics. You would hope you wouldn't have to, but we don't live in a world where that doesn't happen. So then Garcelle says, she was like, I don't have the bandwidth to educate you. And I agree with that. I shouldn't have to educate you on everything when you're 40 something years old and you, you live in America too. And like Garcelle said, Dorit is a, of a woman of the world. You speak four languages. Why do you not understand like cultural sensitivity? But then you also have the thing where Garcelle is like, well, you got into a group predominantly full of white people who are a part of the 1% who don't ever leave their bubble. So it's like you would have to prepare yourself for that type of interaction, as well as you're on a housewives show, which is built on women being catty and fighting back and forth. So it's like, in a, in, like to me, they both were making points. You know what I mean? But then... Dorit kind of made less of a point where she brought up after Garcelle said, I feel like you have a, like an unconscious Karen. And then you have Dorit in her confessional explaining how the word Karen is a negative label. It's disrespectful. And it's like, then you should be able to understand how her saying I'm you saying I'm attacking you is dangerous and for a black woman when it's coming out of a white woman's mouth. So it's like you, you understand Dorit. You do. But then I feel like Garcelle, because then Dorita's like, you know, I feel like there's something between us. And I think the truth is Garcelle don't like Dorit. And I don't think Dorit likes Garcelle. But I don't think Dorit wants to be labeled as like the white woman that doesn't like the black lady. And I also think Garcelle kind of doesn't want to make it a race issue. And I don't think it wholeheartedly is a race issue for Garcelle. I just think that Dorit has done so many things that it's just, it's rubbed Garcelle to the point where she just don't see it for that lady. Like one, you make the comment about you're very cultural and your kids have a lot of cultural, like um, it's exposed to a lot of cultural thing, but things, but everyone that you're speaking about that your kids are exposed to are the help. And it's like, mm, girl, that's not the same. Then you have the situation where y'all laughed at her kids after Erica cussed her child out. And granted, you didn't, you keep saying you didn't laugh, Dorit, but you didn't tell them that they were wrong for laughing. Then you have the situation in Las Vegas where you're basically telling Garcelle to get over it. 
And it's like, who are you to say that? So now we have the attacking situation. I just think it's like things that have mounted on top of th themselves where Garcelle is just like, yeah, I don't see it for you, lady. And that's just what it is. But I need Garcelle to say that. I need her to be like, look, we've had several situations where you've apologized and we've tried to move on. And then you do the same thing again. And I just don't see it for you anymore. And I'm just going to move accordingly. And I also think it was smart for Dorit to get Garcelle to say that, like, do you think I'm racist? And Garcelle to be like, no, I don't think you're racist. Because I think that's where Dorit is like, we're on a slippery slope. And this is also why I don't like when they integrate housewives when they don't start off as an integrated cast, class, well, cast, I mean. Because we have these conversations and not everybody, because the fans don't know how to have this conversation without showing they are racist, they are prejudiced, and they are hateful. Because people are saying very nasty things to Dorit as well as Garcelle in their comments. And it's like, <sighs> We can't have these conversations because some of y'all are just not smart. <laughs> y'all just aren't. And then y'all, y'all, y'all have these, you, you just, we just can't be having these. Sometimes we just can't have these conversations because now people are throwing the anti SM word out there. Then people are calling people racist. And it's like, I think it's just, they both don't listen to each other. They both don't hear each other because neither one of them to me were really landing the plane correctly. And I just think they just should be up front and say, you know what? We just don't like each other. We just going to coexist and move forward. So that is it. That is all you guys. Remember to be bravely authentic. Hop down in them comments below. Give me your thoughts. Be respectful. Give me your thoughts. Um, as well as if you like what you heard, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to. But I'm out, y'all. Deuces.